Hey guys, what is up? What is up? What I've got going for y'all today is another project. Now, I haven't finished a project in a while, so I am raring to get something done. Uh, I have four or five cars right now that I'm working on that have been kind of uh, hanging me up for various reasons. So what I want to do right now is I want to get something done. What I'm going to do is a simpler custom and I've had this idea kicking in my head about uh, comparing paints. So before I mention that, so I did this McLaren uh, I don't know, a month or so ago and this car uh, I used this kind of a cool looking a cool looking pearl craft paint. Now I just recently put about six or seven coats of clear on this and I think it looks pretty good. The clear smoothed out the paint a little bit. It's still a little um, it looks orange peely but it's not. It's just the paint that lies underneath the clear that kind of has that texture to it. So I'm not happy with the texture. I actually like the way the car turned out. Uh, the only issue I have with the paint is the texture that I see in it. So what I want to do is I want to take one of these supercars here and I think I'm going to use this Gallardo right here and I want to do a very similar color scheme to this that I did to the Senna. So we're going to do a green on white and I'll probably use the same wheels if I can find a set. So the cars will be pretty similar paint scheme wise but instead of using the cheap craft paints I'm going to use this Candy 2O and this is poison green and then uh, I want to see the the difference that I get you know between the two now I've been working with this stuff a lot lately and I really really like it uh, so we're gonna do a pretty crazy paint job here it is going to be a deeper green than the uh, the Senna at least I think I might go it, it depends on what base coat I use I can use a a white primer or a black primer but I want to do uh, I'm thinking about a deeper green but we'll we'll talk about that later and uh, we're gonna put some metal flake in it and it is going to really really pop so it's gonna be kind of a crazy color scheme which is how I like my supercars um, I, I don't want to do them boring if I'm gonna do a supercar it's gonna be out there we're gonna do this and give it a striking paint job I, I think at this point it's time to get started I need to pull this guy out of the package and uh, get him taken apart and stripped of his old paint. Okay, so I'm getting ready to drill this guy out. I just wanted to mention uh, something I've been doing a lot more often with these newer castings is I start my, uh, the hole I'm gonna tap before I take the car apart. Uh, these these newer castings have a nice divot in the mushroom there. See that? Yeah, there's a nice divot in that mushroom. It really helps you center that bit. And these newer castings, that post that's that's underneath the base here, is almost always perfectly straight. You can't really count on that with the older castings, but these newer ones are done with uh, kind of such exactness that you can get away with that. So anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start my hole, which I'll finish it later. I don't want to go too deep now because you could go too far, but I will start the hole and then we will uh, finish taking that mushroom off. You can see how those those holes are already started. And it really makes tapping these posts out a lot easier. So, okay guys, I think we're ready to go. I've had this sitting for about 12 hours, uh, way longer than necessary. I think this was this was probably ready after about an hour, but uh, she's ready to go. So let's go ahead and move that over here. Guy. 
Okay, so I got that guy all stripped down. Came off, uh, the paint came off really easily. And I think we're ready to move on to the next step. And I, I'm gonna work this body over just a little bit. Okay guys, so I do have my first coat of primer down. And I'm gonna try something here. Uh, I wanna do like a ghost stripe with this car. So we're going to do a two coat primer. My first coat is white. And then I'm gonna lay down uh, a couple stripes. And then I'm gonna lay down another coat of black primer on top of the white. Uh, and we're gonna see how that, we're gonna see how that looks. ready to put down a coat of black okay so I got my black primer down and look how awesome this primer looks I'm gonna do a car here pretty soon in this primer color uh, this is uh, what's the name of it rust-oleum 2x black primer you get at Walmart and man, this stuff is awesome. Now, I've got the white primer. I don't like it as much. As a matter of fact, the, gr the white that was on this before was just the white primer. And it, it, it seems a little thicker and doesn't lay down as good as this black stuff. But man, this, this black primer is just awesome. And you can use it as a finished coat and then maybe put some, uh, you know, something like a, a tester's dull coat on top of that. It would look great. All right, so let's get that off. And I need to get the uh, tape off. Okay hey guys, I have got the uh, stripes. I got my, my masking tape taken off. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Uh, I think the stripes look pretty uh, uh, uniform. There's, uh, in the important areas, it's the line is crisp. Now, keep in mind, it's black and white now, but this is not gonna be black and white. This car is gonna be green. So, uh, the next step here is I gotta mix up some paint and I'm gonna do that and then I'll see you guys in the paint booth. Hey guys, okay, we're gonna go ahead and go into voiceover mode here because I wanted to talk a little bit about how I approached paint on this car because while I started out uh, with the idea of doing a simple car and the paint job just went completely off the rails and I think I ended up with like five stages of paint and that's after the primer coats so uh, the paint on this car was a little bit complex and it turned out it turned out great I think but um, I want to talk about it a little bit so the first thing I did here is after the primer coats is that I added uh, a sort of a base coat of wicked aluminum and what this does is when you sandwich a metal flake between your primer coat and your candy uh, that metal flake well first it's going to add a little bit of flake to the candy 
and but what it really does is that it adds a lot of depth between those two coats otherwise the the candy actually looks a little bit flat on top of just a primer so after after that sort of a base coat of metal flake uh, then I applied my candy and one thing I'll say about these candy paints it's not that they're hard to use but they're very unforgiving if you get sloppy with the evenness of your coats you you really want to lay your coats down evenly and you and you need to be on the ball for every coat because if you don't you're going to end up with a splotchy paint job or it's going to be uneven um, so how I handle that is I just I just have a pattern and I stick with it and then you start out uh, you know just like any other coat of paint you put down a tack coat and then you go a little bit heavier but one thing with candy is that the shade of the color changes the more you put it down so have in your mind what color you're looking for and then you paint it until you get to that shade if you keep going it'll go past that shade as a matter of fact candy is an aniline dye it'll go to black if you put enough coats on there it gets that dark so just keep that in mind uh, even coats and stop do not be afraid to stop once you get the color you're after now you'll also notice I kinda made a mistake with my base coats here with my primer coats uh, now I mentioned that I was looking to do a ghost stripe and that was my intent I wanted a real subtle change in color for the stripes but my mistake is that I used two very disparate uh, colors of primer I have black and white and what I should have done is gone maybe white and gray or black and gray and that would have given me a much more subtle stripe now in the end it, I, I think it turned out fine it, I, I got no problem with it it just it just wasn't exactly uh, what I was looking for and it was really a bonehead move I, I had the same uh, issue happen uh, on one of my test cars but you know whatever <laughs> you live and you learn so just keep that in mind if you're wanting to do some sort of ghost you know pattern on your car similar to what I'm doing here uh, just keep your base coats similar in color uh, and you'll be you'll be good so anyway uh, after the candy uh, I went ahead and put down a flare tint on top of it and again this adds depth now a lot of that metal flake I first laid down gets covered by the candy and it's it's muted a little bit so if you put a flare tint on top of the candy uh, that metal flake is really gonna pop what I'm using here is uh, it's a uh, Createx Cosmic Sparkle Silver. You'll probably recognize this. Uh, old, old Blubs uses this a lot, and after using it, I can see why it it's pretty damn amazing. It it just really it has a really strong effect. Let's just put it that way. It just adds a sparkle to your paint that you don't get, you can't get with just that base coat of of metal flake that is pretty much my main coats now after this you would normally clear and then put on your details but here's something you have to keep in mind with candy is that as I said it's an aniline dye and what this has a tendency of doing is bleeding upwards so say you have a blue candy paint and then you try to put a red uh, detail paint say on the taillights where you're going to end up with purple taillights because that that candy is just going to bleed right into your taillights so you have to come over that candy with a uh, another coat that's going to seal it in what I use to do that is a createx bleed checker you know it's another one of their specific products and uh, you really you really need it it's basically an easy to apply urethane you don't you don't mix it with anything there's no you don't thin it you don't add any um, any other additive you, you take it straight from the bottle and put it into your brush and spray it it's kind of a pain to spray it does kind of gunk up my airbrush and that and that's kind of annoying and you can't really do two cars in a row uh, it, it gunks it up that fast so you have to you know uh, put a couple coats on one car you have to clean your brush out and then you go to another car but you have to use this stuff if you want to put any details on your car or any other paint say you want to do a two-tone paint job uh, you have to use the bleed checker otherwise you're going to end up with uh, really messed up colors 
So after the bleed checker, uh, that's when I started laying down some clear coats. Now I like to clear coat over uh, my base coats before I put on details. That way it locks in those base coats. So say I, say I was getting a little messy with my details. Uh, you can go back with a little bit of water and a paper towel and you can wipe that off. And if you've already uh, cleared your car, you protect your underlying paints. It's a good way to, uh, you know, just give you a little bit of breathing room uh, when you're doing some of that really fine painting. Uh, you know, if you're doing badges or door handles, stuff like that, which is really easy to get messy with. That That's about it for my base coats. After this, uh, we're going to go in and I'm going to paint some uh, some details in the interior and details on the body itself. So uh, let's get to that. I'm using a few new tools today, which is pretty cool. Uh, this is a new, uh, new paintbrush for me. This is, uh, come on, focus up, buddy. So this is a new paintbrush. This is an Army Painter uh, Kalinsky. It's a Kalinsky Sable uh, paintbrush. I think it's a two. It's either a two or a zero, but I think this is a two. They had a smaller one at the store that was not going to hold any paint. It was going to be a pain in the ass to use. Uh, so I think this is a uh, Army Painter Kalinsky Master Class number two. Uh, also, and this is kind of cool. I don't know if you see this. This is a It's a body holder here. Let's focus up. Let me back this off a little bit. So this this little thing underneath here, uh, this is a body holder that I designed and printed. So it's just uh, allows me to have more control of the model while I'm painting. Uh, it's a little cockeyed on here, but uh, it's plenty solid, which is nice. So it doesn't bounce around when I'm painting it, and I have complete control of the model while I'm painting it. Um, so <clears throat> I've noticed a lot of guys while they're doing their details on their car they like to prop the car up on the table like here and then come in and do their detail work uh, as a separate let me see here so when they do their detail work they come in here with their hands and paint on it I would really recommend not doing that because what happens is you're not you don't have complete control of what's going on uh, whenever you're painting you should really hold on to your your object that you're painting and then lock up so elbows in I put my forearms on the table I put my the uh, base of my hand the heel of my hands together my knuckles are pushed into the work surface and as I push, I'm pushing more with the bottom of my hand than I am my fingers. So I'm trying to get as little movement as possible. I'm completely locked up right now. My elbows are locked into my body. My forearms are smashed into the, the work table. My knuckles are smashed into my work surface. And then the heels of my hands are smashed together. All this, what all this does is it gives me a very stable platform to move the brush. I really have close, tight control of the brush. And also when you're when you're painting, for the most part, don't paint with the base or the middle part of the brush. Paint with the very tip. And this is also why you don't really want a super small brush. You really want a brush. This, this one right here is pretty much too small. Uh, if the brush is too small, it can't hold any paint. So you dab a paint on the brush as soon as it hits the model, the paintbrush is empty and you got to go back to load it up again. What you want to do is have at least a little bit of brush there to hold paint and then you just paint with the very tip. So anyway, that's my particular uh, uh, approach to painting the details. It's lock up, get as much control as possible. Don't lose control of the object you're painting. Don't let it sit on the table. Any little bump or, any bump or move and that thing's going to take off and you're going to mess up. And also, when you have control of the object you're painting, if you're shaky or you're not in a position where you're able to move the brush, you can actually move the object you're painting a little bit to uh, paint. So it's just, you know, just some my approach. I'm not saying that's the only way to do it, but that's how I do it. 
and I've been happy with my results so far, at least with painting details. Okay, so I'm not going to go into great detail as far as uh, detail painting on this car, but I do want to show sort of myself putting the technique I was talking about in practice. And what I'm doing here is just painting in the door handles of this car, and you can see how I've locked up and uh, am using just the very tip of the brush. I've loaded the brush up a little bit. At, at this point, it's not super loaded up, but you can load it up more and more if you need to. And uh, getting a really fine control over the brush so that I can hit my mark really accurately. That's the whole point, anyway. I mean, it, you uh, you want to be able to uh, finely control the brush so that you put it where you want it to be. But the detail painting on this car went pretty well. Uh, I didn't go crazy with it. There's not a whole lot of places on the body to put detail. And, you know, since this video is already getting pretty long, I'm going to cut this segment of the, uh, the video a little shorter than I usually do. So, um, anyway, uh, we are going to shoot right on past uh, detail painting. So the next step after this one uh, is to put a few more coats of clear on, which I did off camera, and uh, then we get into the reassembly process. So let's go to that. Okay, so we are all ready for reassembly. Um, first off, here's the body. And man, let me tell you, I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. Now, if you get this too close to the camera, I've noticed that you you really see all the metal flake, but what you don't see is the is the uh, sort of the shimmer. You kind of have to have it in your hand and be at a certain distance to see the shimmer. But this uh, this paint really pops. As a matter of fact, it has that factory Mattel Hot Wheels look to it. Uh, I'm really shocked how close it looks to a factory Mattel paint. Uh, not the not the uh, stripes necessarily. There's a couple little uh, inconsistencies with the paint on the stripes. It's not too noticeable, but it is there. But the paint itself, whew, uh, it's all uh, Createx. It looks uh, it looks great. And on the base, so. On the front, I have kind of a light metal flake. It's aluminum metal flake in the grill area. Uh, on the back, the tailpipes are a darker metal flake color. Inside, I have a little dab of black. And then this back grill area right here is also that aluminum metal flake, which is lighter colored. Uh, the tires and the, the wheels, these are real rider 10 spokes. Okay, so the wing, the wing was painted white. Here we go. So the wing was painted white, and then I put a few layers of Tester's Dull Coat on and top. And the same for the base. I put a few layers of Dull Coat on this as well, because I wanted this to have a more of a matte look to offset the shininess of the body. Uh, didn't really do anything to the glass. It's just going to just cleaned it up a little bit. I do have uh, color matched screws. They'll match the base. And then here is the interior. So the interior, I spent some time on the details. I, I didn't go crazy with them. I just wanted to have a, a smattering of color. Uh, the engine bay was masked off and painted black. And then I just highlighted a couple different shades of metal flake in there. The uh, passenger area just painted, you know, the seats green and the steering wheel green. And uh, a few other spots of green. I do have some... Uh, some metal flake in the vents up here and on the uh, climate control controls and there's like a tweeter a couple tweeters on the edges of the uh, dash I also put a little dab of metal flake in there and uh, then on top of that I put five or six coats of createx clear and let me tell you so I was not a believer in water-based clear coat but after using it and learning is sort of the secret it's not like a difficult secret but the deal with water-based clear is you have to put down a lot of layers the problem is water-based clear is mostly water and not a lot of clear so 
you really have to put layer upon layer of, of it on your workpiece to get that glossy coat. And that's not a problem because uh, water-based paints dry really fast, so it's not like you're waiting forever per coat, but you do have to go through that process. And that's the same thing I did with the with the body here. The body has, I don't know, 10, 12 coats of clear on it. And uh, came out pretty well, I think. So it is done. And uh, really all that's left now is reassembly. So let me go ahead and put this thing together and uh, show you how it turned out. can't tell you how happy I am with this car uh, you know like I said it's not absolutely perfect but it's really good and you know I like how the details turned out uh, they, came, they went on pretty cleanly these uh, these wheels look great with this particular casting and another thing is I, I'm really I really like white interiors when you're doing these cars because uh, it really makes the interior stand out but on top of that it makes your details that you paint in the interior also stand out and I don't know if you see the, uh, the engine bay has some nice details that show up as well okay so that's it that is the Lamborghini Gallardo LP 574 Super Leggera uh, done with Createx green candy with uh, uh, lots of metal flake and then a couple of racing stripes and a little bit of uh, and a little bit of love. Okay, guys, I think that is going to do it for this video, and I'm just going to let this uh, this car roll while I sign out. I know this video has been a little bit longer than it probably should be, but. But I wanted to add a little bit more talk in this video, you know, about how we go about building these cars. So uh, let me know what you think. I, I can't do this every time, but if you guys like this sort of style of video, I, I can throw these in from time to time. And also, I learned a lot uh, over the past couple months, and I kind of wanted to share that with y'all. Well, <laughs> I guess that does it. Uh, guys, I really appreciate you watching, and I hope you enjoyed this, even if it was a little bit long. So uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching and uh, y'all take care. All right, I'll catch you next time.